right, ladies. We got some good information coming your way. All right. First thing I want to announce is the class setup. IRC. How do you find out when class replays? Uh, if you're subscribed to the channel and you click the notification bell, as soon as this video goes up on the YouTube site, it will send you a message that says the video's ready for replay. The chat part will be taken out. Okay? So, let's move on. Um, the class schedule, the way we're going to do it, we're going to run six weeks and then two weeks off to give you time to let everything marinate and sink in. Uh, at the end of the six weeks, for all students that turn in their homework, their name goes into a hat, so to speak. And we will have a drawing at the end of the six weeks. The person's name that is pulled will win a $50 gift. It may be a gift card or a box of goodies, but it will be worth $50. That's so we know that you're getting your homework in. All right? Now, homework will go to your teacher. If you're in Monday's class, It'll go to me. If you're in Tuesday's class, it will go to Pam. Wednesday will go to Kay Jude. Thursday will go to Sue. However, all of them are mailed in to the main email address, the online tatting class at gmail.com. That, at that point, you need to put in your subject line the teacher and the class you were in. It is the first time you've seen me, Nanetta. I don't usually show my face in pictures. I don't take good pictures. I'm afraid I'll break the camera. But I got so many pointed at me right now. If I, one breaks, I'm in trouble. Um, but this is to help you all build your tatting supply. Okay? Now, homework, there is no set time. You have six weeks. And if you turn in 15 pieces of homework, you get an entry 15 times. So the more homework you do, the more entries you get. If you turn in something that you did on your own, that is an entry. We want to see the work you're doing. We're proud of you. Even if you make miniature milestones, we are proud of the work that you achieve. And we show you our thanks for being a student and learning by giving you every six week an opportunity to win the grand prize. Hi, Sharon. I'm too pretty to hide. Well, thank you, Pam. I appreciate that. At my age, it takes a lot of work. <laughs> but anyway, back to the class schedule. So it's six weeks on, two weeks off. Now, during the holidays... That's going to be a little tricky. We're working on that, and as it comes closer, we'll get past that hump, all right? This series of classes will finish up this year's classes until September. We will go six weeks. When we take our break, we will be shut down over the summer because conventions and get-togethers and stuff usually happen over the summer. So having classes and getting the students in is kind of hard to do when everybody's at a convention. Speaking of which, August 26th through the 29th, Miles of Tatting, Palmetto's Tatters Guild, their big tatting convention is August 26th through the 29th. If you would like to go, you need to contact Palmetto Tatters Guild. They have all the information on their site. You don't want to miss it. It is a lot of fun. You learn a lot and you meet a lot of people. And most of the teachers that are there 
you've either bought a book or you've heard about them. So you want to be there because there is a ton of information for you and a ton of fun. It's a whole weekend that all you get to do is tat. Now, where else can you go and have a weekend of nothing but tatting without interruption? Nowhere. So sign up and go to Palmetto's Tatting. All right? The next thing, special events over the summer. We are going to hold, each teacher will hold one special event class. Now, it will be a completed project after that one class. So the class could last up to two hours. If it does, make sure you set that time to the side. And we'll get the dates out to you as soon as everybody's got their date picked. All right? Last thing to tell you. Now you recognize my voice. <laughs> I love it. Last thing to tell you. We have hit some serious milestones. We have 302 students enrolled in class since taking over. Okay? And we started in December. Now, that is a huge milestone because the original class role was lost to us when Georgia tried to transfer the email over to me. They mistook that she wanted to close the email and all that information got lost. So this is starting from scratch since December. We have 301 students enrolled and we have 275 students subscribe to the channel. Now, once we reach 1,000 viewers, we can monetize these videos and pay for the website and also donate funding for scholarships to go to the various tatting tat days. All right? So, spread the word. Let them know. Let people know. Sign up. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that we can keep building the classes and more students can go to the conventions at little to no cost. Now, isn't that awesome? I know that everybody that I'm talking to right now knows how important Helping others is all about. And that's what the goals of these classes are. They're free for you all to attend. But getting to a convention is, all I got to say is my kids say, it's off the chain, Mom. And that ain't no joke. They're the best time you will ever have. Hi, Joanne. So, without further ado, I'm going to change cameras, and we're going to show you today's class project. So give me a second, as soon as I can get my mouse to work here. All right. As you can see, today's pattern is the florette edging. Now, because I'm zoomed in, and if I zoom out, I'm going to make you dizzy. So we're not going to do that. I don't want to make anybody dizzy. The website for this pattern is Joelle Paulson's site. She is a wonderful tatter. She has several free tat tat tatting patterns on her site. But this one, I adore. Okay? The reason I adore this one more than any of them, is the versatility of this pattern. As you can see, she's got it as an edging on a tablecloth. You can also use it as an edging on a, say, Kleenex, uh, not Kleenex, uh, what am I trying to say? You use them in the summertime and in the spring when you're sneezing your head off. Handkerchief, I knew it'd come around. Okay, you can use it. And she even worked out 
the corner piece. So what I'm going to show you is how we do this corner piece. That is the main part of this lesson because all of this is basic tatting. Okay, if you can do the double stitch, you can do all of this. But this corner is tricky. But first, I want to show you what this whole series, six weeks, is going to be. We're going to make us a card. I took a piece of cardstock. I folded it in half. I trimmed the corners, made a little sign. Okay, this is going to be the base on this card as if it's a flower garden. Now, we're going to add to this card as we go. And once the card is done, I'm going to send it to Georgia to show her what you all learned in class and lift her spirits as well, which I want all of you to keep her in thought and prayer, her and Richard both. They've both been very sick lately, and I want everybody to keep them in thought and prayer because Georgia is a cornerstone of the tatting community. These classes would not exist if it wasn't for her. And my job here is to carry it forward for her. And that's what I intend to do. So without any further ado, we're going to do this edging as a base to our card down here at the bottom. Now up here, if you've got a word program or something like that on your computer, you can print this out and make it do all kinds of crazy things, whatever you want to do. I just put this up here, okay, just to show you we're making a card. To show you that tatting can be used for other things, not just dollies, okay? And inside, we can put whatever we want to say. Stuff it in an envelope and mail it. And we're going to mount this tatting so that it is removable. So that whoever you send it to, they can take it off, use it on a towel, use it on a sleeve of a collar, a trim, a bracelet, whatever they want to do with it. So it's dual purpose. All right. So this is the trim itself. And this is the corner. Got it upside down. Sorry about that, folks. And this is our tricky part right here. It does not look easy, okay? But I'm going to tell you, it's very easy. It's just you have to be mindful how you're going to approach it. And Joelle, she did a wonderful job explaining it. So... The pattern right here, it says a ring of seven picots, and it's got one double stitch between each pico. Then you reverse your work. That's the very start. And I've worked that up, and I also worked up the chain right there, okay? Now, where I'm at is this do not reverse work. That's what DNRW means. Do not reverse your work. And I have it. It's just all the same way. It's front side, back side tatting is what I do. Okay? Now, I have tatted the 4 Pico, 8 Pico, 8 Pico, 4. And it says to join to the middle of the flower, the pico on the flower. Now, wonder what kind of join that's going to be. Do you think it's going to be a regular join or what? How about a lock join? So, watch your count on your picos. You want it to join into your fourth pico. We've got one, two, three four. So you're going to reach down there and you're going to grab that up. And if you can't get it with the pick on your shuttle, you can always use a crochet hook. The nice thing about grabbing it with 
the pick on the shuttle is it points your shuttle in the correct direction. Okay? So that you can tighten this up. You want it to fit straight up next to that pico. And then pull it down. And you are going to create a lock join. But always come in and check to be sure. Okay? Now, it says to do four more double stitches. So we're going to do it. One, two, three, and four. And then it says to reverse our work. So let's reverse our work. We're back around to the front side of the work. Okay? Are you all getting that? Thank you, Teresa. Hi, Laurel. Okay, now, let's move on. The next thing it says is another ring with seven picots separated by one double stitch. So let's do that. Now we're going to do regular front side tatting. Okay, that's one. Now, I use a really weird pico gauge. What I made, it's my favorite. I made it out of a credit card, I think. As you can see. So, I just cut it to the size that I wanted my picots to be. Bye, Pam. So, here we go. Now, we put our pico gauge in. Hold it between this thread here that's wrapped around our hand and this thread and put in our next double stitch. Robin, you're fine. Don't worry about it. This is something you'll want to do. Okay? Now we move our Pico gauge over and we do another one. Are you having problems with seeing how to do the double stitch, Robin? We want to do seven Picos, okay? There's one, two, three, four. Can y'all see okay? Five. Six. And seven. See, I've got seven picos on here. And you want to count them off before you close that ring. Alright? Then, we're going to close the ring. Normally, you post your shuttle. And that means run the shuttle from the front through the back. But I did that with this pattern. And the problem I found is that last double stitch, when you start on that chain, because you have to curve it, make it curve, it'll fold over. So, I just closed the ring without posting my shuttle. Some patterns, you, you will find that, yeah, posting the shuttle just doesn't work. Hi, Steph. I didn't even see you come in. I'm sorry. Alright, now we're going to reverse our work and we're going to do Another chain of four. So let's do that. One, two, three, and four. And we want to pull it tight, okay, so it all snugs up like it's supposed to. Now, here we go. 
we're at another ring. This will be the last ring in this series. And it's the same thing. Seven picots separated by one double stitch. Thank you, Teresa. So let's put in our seven picots. Started with the wrong half. See, even I make mistakes. Handy Hands has hankies. I'll teach you one day on a class how to attach this to a hanky. The easy way. Maybe that could be our next project. What do y'all think? I, I remember as a kid, all the women always carried a hanky no matter where they went. Nowadays, you can't find one. Uh, this, I believe, is a quarter inch, if I'm not mistaken. It's my favorite because it makes the picos the exact size I want them to be. Now, I have other Pico gauges. Trust me, I have a blue me in Pico gauges. I think I got a Pico gauge for every day of the week. All right, that's five. That's six. <laughs> Let's go seven. All right, we've got the last ring in this series. So, what we're going to do with this is we're going to move in to this corner piece. This is the basic pattern for this trim. Okay? So, what we're doing now is we are going to move in to this corner. All right, the thread size I'm using is a size 20 Elizabeth. You can get that at Handy Hands or the Tatting Corner. All right, so we need to reverse our work. Now, remember, we're moving on down here. We're not going to make this big, long thing. But for your card, you want to make this, and it will have to match your... Um, paper that you're going to use for your card. If it's four inches wide, your fold over for your card, then you just tat it up big enough to fit on there. And yes, you can even attach this to store-bought cards. So you don't have to make your own card. Just get something that's got a real pretty background to it to where when you add this to it, you see it. It pops. Oh, yeah, everybody needs new shuttles. When you buy threads, you have to buy new shuttles. All right, now, let's get on with it, okay? Let's see. Now, we're right here for the corner. After having made the lower flower, that's this flower right here. Well, I'm off screen, sorry. After having made this flower right here, that is the lower flower. All right. Then we want to do our chain. It is four joining pico, eight pico, 12. So where we're going to join, there's a little tiny pico right there. All right. Can y'all see that? And what we're going to do is join to that pico. This pick is not going through that pico because you can barely see it. So you're going to need your little crochet hook. I would suggest a 14 or a 16, depending on how big the gap is. True, Linda, so true. You just can't have enough patterns. And we get new ones every day. So tat your four double stitches. Three, four. 
All right, now here's what we're going to do. Now, this is, I'm tatting front side, back side. If you are not tatting front side, back side, you will reach down through that pico, okay? And you'll grab that thread and pull it up like this. And you'll run your shuttle through. What I do is I loop the thread on my finger so that I can control this and it won't get twisted up. Once it gets twisted up with Elizabeth thread in its twist, it can be a mess. So hook it on your middle finger. Any finger will do. I just gauge it by eye, Deb. That's all. I just make it really super small. I used to call them my teeny honey baby picos. And everybody laughed about my teeny honey baby picos. So now I just say tiny baby picos. Or tiny picos. <laughs> so pick whatever way you want to do it. But just make it really super small. All right? Anyway, if you're doing regular traditional tatting where there's no definitive front or back side, you just pull it up through. However, we're doing front side, back side. So we have to come up from here and grab it. We have to put the join right here on top, come from the bottom, and pull it down so that everything is uniform. All right? Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But if you're entering into a competition, make sure you do it the right way because you will get points against you. All right? Tatting is fun, and it's your own. Do it the way you want to do it. Just be consistent, okay? So, we got our join in, all right? Now, we're going to do eight more double stitches. So, let's put those in. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Pull us off some more thread, tighten our chain, and grab our pico gauge. Put it in. All right. We're going to do our 12. Remember, it said 8 pico 12. Yeah, but if I did that, Teresa, it'd be awfully long. Have you seen my daggers? <laughs> and I just shaved them off. So let's put in 12 double stitches. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You would adjust, all right, you would lay your hanky down along with your straight piece. And your joins would be right here. This little pico right here is where you're going to join it to the hanky. And then when you reach that corner piece, your last join will be this one right here. Let me get that in camera. Be this one right here. Okay? Does that make sense? So, let me count these off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. Hey, Jeff. Well, thank you. It's called amethyst. That's my favorite color. All right. So, we've gotten the 8 Pico 12. Now, we want to join to the middle Pico of this last little flower all right again another lock join into the fourth pico on that flower i use this crochet hook because my hand's going to get in the way of this one all right 
seriously. Girls, be quiet. Mommy's teaching. We haven't told them they're dogs yet, by the way. They don't know that. They're spoiled. Okay, pull that up. It's a lock join. We come up and lock her in. Make sure your chain is adjusted and tight. Okay, once we do that, then it says to chain four and reverse work. Okay, so let's chain four more. One, two, three, four. All right, we got our four double stitches in. Hi, Karen. Yes, Karen, it will be available later this afternoon as soon as my husband gets it processed. He does, he's the tech dude of the group. <laughs> All right, Phyllis, let's see, where in the pattern does it say a very small pico? It doesn't say, Phyllis. I use a small pico because it makes it lay better. You can use a larger pico, but it's going to leave a gap here. And it makes it lay funny. If you want it a looser pattern, you could add the extra length to that. All right. I don't have any kitties. I love kitty cats, but I'm allergic to them. They don't love me. So, all right. Now, it says to do another ring. We got our eight, our chain of eight Pico 12 joined, and we're going into, we did the four. Now, we're going into the next ring. Same deal. This is such an easy pattern. To do, you could probably do it in your sleep. I've done this pattern, I know, a dozen times, if not more than that. That's one pico. Two. Three. Four. It's a good time to show y'all a trick about the Elizabeth thread. You know how Elizabeth thread always kinks up when you're trying to close your rings? On this pattern, it would be, except for the 8 Pico 8 part, because that's where you're going to join it to whatever you're hanging it from. I agree with you, Teresa. Anyway, let me show you a little trick real quick. You know how Elizabeth's got a twist to it? If you will take and pull your thread like this and open your ring, you see what it's doing? It's pulling that twist out. Then when you go to close your ring, the twist is gone. That's a little trick to use with the Elizabeth thread, and it works every time. If you do that before you close your ring, you're never going to have a problem. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Nanetta, you are a wealth of knowledge. This is seven. Thank you so much. You're a huge contributor to the classes. And we are so grateful for you. All right, there we go. We got our flower in. Now it says we've got to do a chain of four. Okay. So it's basically the same routine. And then we'll move on from here to put that corner in. So put your four in. We got our four. Put 
that other half stitch in. There we go. Now, it says, do our last ring, and then here's where the curve comes in. And you'll see it. It's right here. We've got, we've come up, we've done the join here, did the top, we've done the second. Now we're coming in with this right here. Can y'all see that? That's where we're coming in at. So, let's do our, let's see, where am I? Eight chain four ring. And this is the next ring. So we're putting in the next ring. One. Two. Three. One, two, three, four. This one's five. <clears throat> Six. Seven. Sometimes even my fingers get in the way of myself. That one did a twisted number on me. Lost a Pico. And there she is. Got her. Alright, now. It says. For our chain. It says chain 12. Placing the current chain behind the other. Joined to middle Pico of previous long chain. So, let's do that. Get us enough thread off so that we can do this. So we're going to cat 12. All right. We're going one, two, three, four. That one didn't flip. Once you've been tatting for a while, you can sit there and watch TV and you can tell when you've made a flip and when you haven't. And trust me, when you haven't, it can be a headache. If you tat tight, like I do. New tatters, this is where you have a problem. You don't flip your thread and you'll find out what it feels like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, now it says to put this behind the previous chain. Get everything out of the way so you can see. This is the previous chain, and it says to put it behind the previous chain. All right? And what you're going to do is join it right there. So you're going to pull it down. This is what is called a down join. And you're going to run your shuttle up through that join. And work it in. Adjust as necessary. All right. And if you drop it, just pick it up and straighten it out. All right. And it's got to lay over that piece back there. And it's going to be fiddly. Trust me, it's going to be fiddly. 
what I do is I take my crochet hook, all right, loosen it up, and adjust where the join's going to go. Put your join in carefully. Okay. You want it sort of kind of off to the side on that chain. All right, now, she says chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And it says, join to the pico of the previous flower and do not reverse your work. That's this flower we just made. And we want to go in to this middle pico. Okay. Pull it up. Hook it on your finger. shuttle through. You want to adjust it, make sure it's taut. Okay? Just like this. And it's going to lay. Once everything's in place, you'll see how it works together. Alright? There we go. Now, do not reverse. Chain Four. Remember, we're doing the corner. Okay, we chained our four. It says reverse our work. Now we're going to do another pretty flower. Okay. Seven picots separated by one double stitch. One. Two. Or there's one picot there, two double stitches. And that's the second pico. Three, backwards, get your seven picots in, that's four. Six and seven. All your tatting's gonna get dirty. Okay, it just that's the way it happens. Uh, but there's a product called Orvis that will clean it up nicely. Uh, you can use downy, but make sure you hand wash your tatting. Don't run it through a wash machine. You will ruin it, okay? You'll get a bunch of loose little threads in your washer because this is delicate, all right? Even in the old days, they hand washed their tatty. All right, so we've done that ring. We reverse our work. Put in another four double stitches. I don't like working with thread that far away from the shuttle. Okay, and we're going to put in our next ring. Same deal. Seven picots separated by one double stitch. Okay. 
So put in our next ring. Thank you, Teresa. It's hard to read and watch my tatting, you know. <laughs> That's four. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. And seven. All right. Now, here comes part two of this sweet little jewel on the corner. All right. We got our flower in there. Now, I did the second flower. It says reverse our work. Right? And it says chain 12. Placing the current chain on top. Okay. And because we're doing front side, back side, the top would be the bottom. See how front side, back side can play with your tatting, but it puts everything in perspective. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now, this one will join to this same pico, but it comes in from the front side. Okay. Not the chain. <laughs> Pull it back out. That thing just popped right on in there. Look it on our finger. Now, this time, our shuttle's going to do a down join. Okay? And then we're going to put in the other 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We're going to come in and we're going to join it on this little jewel right here. Okay, middle picos where we're joining. Yeah, Moose Scan is a huge contributor as well. All right, there is our corner. As you can see, we've made the turn. Okay, we've come up this way made the turn and we're headed back this way and this is what your corner will look like once you're done okay and as you can see when you put in this next series it's going to be the corner and it will fit on the corner of a card how cute is that it'll fit on the corner of a hanky And I totally missed the screenshot on that, didn't I? Sorry, guys, I wasn't looking. Uh, but you see the corner. 
and this is what it's going to look like. This little piece here is going to lay on top, and on the back, you're going to have these two joints. All right? So any questions, guys? Any questions at all? Bev, we're going to get into more info on the joints, too. Not a problem. So, for homework, okay, I want everyone to tat an edging, okay? Extra credit. You will get two entries for the homework if you turn in the corner, okay? You turn in the pieces together to where the corner's in place. That's another entry. You attach it to a hanky, that is another entry. Use your imagination. Uh, they're both Elizabeth. I can get you the color numbers. I don't know the names right off the top of my head. This is 684 and 108. Okay? Yeah, I do post my shuttle. But on this pattern, K, it kept turning that last pico over when I'd post the shuttle and go into the into the chain. So yeah, I post my shuttle, but there are patterns that you just can't. Yeah, there is videos up explaining all the joints. She did. She did a wonderful job. I am absolutely in love with this pattern. I have used this pattern repeated, repeatedly for many, many things. All right. Any more questions from the class? Do you all understand what the homework is? It may be, I don't know. Like I say, I go by the color number. <laughs> All right, let me fl flip the screen back. If I can get my mouse to work in here. All right. There we go. So. Uh, class next week, we will continue with this theme for the card. Our next pattern that we will be doing is going to be one that I think you guys are going to like. Kathleen Menini. Menini? I can't pronounce her name. This is it. Everybody see it? That's our next pattern. We're going to do the flowers and the little cute bunnies. Aren't they adorable? Those are the next two weeks patterns. Then we have another pattern. We're going to add to this card. Check it out. Too cute, too cute, too cute. And then the last pattern we're going to add some trees in there. So, this card is going to be one to go down in the history books. And then once it's done, I'm going to sign it from the online chatting class. All the students and everything will be acknowledged in this card. We want to show Georgia that her work is shining bright and new for everybody. Okay? So, if there's no more questions, and you all enjoy this format and like the way things are doing, let me know. If you want something you're interested in to teach, let me know. We'll get it taught to you. If you have questions or anything, 
The teachers will get back to you within 24 hours, aside from weekends and holidays. The homework, Carol, is tad and edging. That's one. Okay? Second part of your homework is tad up the corner. Third part of your homeworks, put it together. Attach it to something. Every entry puts you closer to the $50 prize at the end of the six-week series. All right? So if there's anything you all want me to teach in particular or any of the other teachers, let us know. And don't forget, go to Palmetto's website, Palmetto's Tatters Guild, okay, dot org, and sign up for the convention in August. It's August the 26th through the 29th. The theme is Miles of Tatting. So get your minds working, okay? And enjoy yourself. Until next time, happy tatting. Have a wonderful day. And Pam will see you in class tomorrow. All right? Same time. Thank you very much for attending. If it weren't for you all, this would not be a success. So you all have a great day. You're welcome. No, Phyllis, the links change every time because the links match the video when it goes up. So you'll get an email every day for class if you're signed up for the classes. Tomorrow is needle tatting. You're welcome, Irene. You're welcome, Bev. You're welcome, Haley. Bye, Deborah. Bye, Aurora. Love you, girl. I'll see you tomorrow, Robin. You're welcome, John. Yeah, we have some great designers, don't we, Laurel? By the way, anybody wants a pattern in the class, contact Laurel. She'll get it to us. You're welcome, Joanne. Adios, Aurora. Yeah, Pam teaches tomorrow. I'm going to sit in to make sure she doesn't have any problems with tech stuff. Bye, Harola. Bye, Phyllis. You're welcome, Carol. You all have a wonderful day. I don't know what Pam's teaching. I think she's got a pattern of her own she's going to be teaching. But I'll talk to her about it and see if she can throw in some pointers on the pattern of today if you want, Bonnie. I know she's done it in Needle. No, Pam's going to do the needle class. You're welcome, Cynthia. But I will be there, or trust me, I'll be there. Bye, Nanetta. Hugs, girl.
You're welcome, Sue. She's doing a motif of ten. Okay. I'll talk to her tonight when she gets back and see if she wants to hit some high points on this pattern for the students. Yes, Joanne, all classes are at 3 p.m. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you, too, Eve. Yeah, Georgia is a blessing to the tatting community. Okay, you're covering or is Pam covering that tomorrow? Isn't it? This pattern is adorable. Okay. I'll just talk to her tonight and see if she can throw some pointers in on the pattern. So if there's not anything else, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Y'all have a wonderful day, and I'll see y'all later, and happy tatting. Bye-bye.